Good morning. Almost. Let's try that again. There we go. That's better. Good morning. Welcome to Surfside United Methodist Church. Whether you are here in person with us or worshiping with us at home, we're glad you're here on this fourth Sunday of Advent. Welcome. We have several announcements this morning. Um, if you're here, don't forget to check the, the mailbox, the mail basket out in the, in the narthex as we exchange holiday greetings that way. Uh, if you have some to place in there, you may do so. Just check and see if you've gotten any. Uh, that's always a lot of fun to check in there uh, each week. A reminder of our Christmas Eve services coming up this week. Uh, we will ask you to register. Let us know which service that you're planning on coming to. Uh, if you're at home, you can go ahead and be doing that now, surfsideumc.org. Our services will be at 4 in here in the sanctuary, which is a child-friendly service. 5.30, which will be in the Family Life Center with the Wave Praise Band. Uh, and it will be a family-friendly service as well more traditional service at 7 o'clock here in the sanctuary and at 11 o'clock here as well. The 7 o'clock and 11 o'clock services will be streamed on Facebook Live, uh, so you have a lot of different options about how you might be able to attend worship uh, on Christmas Eve this year, but we do ask if you plan on being here that you register so that we're prepared with everything that we need uh, for a wonderful worship experience on Christmas Eve. Tonight will be our longest night service. Uh, it gets its name from the fact that, that tonight and tomorrow night are the longest nights of the year. Uh, and that sometimes the, the darkness feels more overwhelming than the light, but the light of Christ still shines for those who are, are feeling sad or, or overwhelmed or just would like a Christmas service that's a little bit more meditative and reflective. You're invited to be here at 6 o'clock this evening. Thank you on behalf of, of, of our Angel Tree folks uh, for your response in the last week. Uh, it was overwhelming. We more than met the need. Uh, so I, I want to thank you on behalf of those children who will be blessed by your gifts uh, on Christmas for all that you have done. Let us now prepare our hearts for worship.
Good morning. Would you please stand and join me in the call to worship? We come this day to worship. I hope this season has beckoned us forward. Come and rejoice, for God's light is coming to us. Praise be to God who pours the light into our lives. Open your hearts and spirits and receive the blessings of God. May we always be ready to respond to the joys of the day. Now let us continue together in our opening prayer. In the rush of preparation for our celebrations, we come to this place to be fed by God. We need the hope, peace, joy, and love that this season represents. We need to listen again with wonder to the word of God come down to earth. Open our hearts this day, Lord, to receive the word, to be fed, and then to be those who will share with others as you have shared with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now let's join in singing, O Come All Ye Faithful. words from the Gospel of John. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the whole world might be saved through him. We light this candle as a symbol of the love of God born at Christmas. May the light sent from God shine in the darkness to show us the way to salvation. Come, Lord Jesus, fill our hearts with your love. Oh, come, come, Amen. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds that we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Today's scripture comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Hear the word of the Lord. The birth of Jesus the Messiah. Now, the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save the people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through a prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her, until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. For as long as I can remember, the church in which I grew up in, in Greenville had a tradition of staging a, a live nativity. I participated in it when I was in MYF in the 1970s. See, I go ahead and do the math. You can figure it out. Those were some of the coldest nights of my life. We were one of the first churches that, that did the live nativity kind of thing, and the big draw was that we had live animals. Now, I recall one, one Christmas Eve in particular when I was playing Mary, you know, who else, um, and I was sitting on a bale of hay, and the donkey kept eating the hay out from under me. I was appointed to serve at that church as the associate pastor in the mid-1980s. And that live nativity was still an ongoing tradition. I remember the Christmas of 1987. I can't remember what I had for breakfast today, but I can remember that. The nativity was a one-night-only event on Christmas Eve. And we had everything planned down to the, to the smallest de detail. Who would play what part on which shift? We had, had several shifts. 
who would build the set, who was in charge of the costumes, all of those things. Now, two weeks before Christmas, I got a telephone call from the newspaper in Greenville. It was the afternoon paper. Do y'all remember when there used to be a morning paper and an afternoon paper every day of the week? It was from the afternoon paper, and they wanted to run a color photo of our live nativity scene, which was going to be held in two weeks, on the front page above the fold on their Christmas Eve newspaper. Could we do that? Of course, I said. You can't buy that kind of publicity. I hung up the phone and said, now what am I going to do? <laughs> so we got busy. We scrambled. We found, we found folks who were willing to be there that night. We had a Mary. We had a Joseph. We had the angel, shepherds, wise men. The live animals weren't there. But, but we had everything else in place. And then I called my dad. My parents were members of that church. When all else fails, you call your dad. And so he and I went to the lumber yard, and we were able to get some scraps of lumber, and we worked building a, a, a manger set. And so on the night that, that they were coming to take the photograph, we were ready. The photographer had scheduled to come around dusk, and it was one of those perfect December nights, cold and crisp and clear. I decided that I would take my two older daughters, Caitlin and Sarah, who were three and two at the time. Rebecca was five months. She stayed at home. And, and, and take them with me. It was a teachable moment. On the way out the door, I grabbed one of their Cabbage Patch dolls. Yeah, remember those? Yeah, you had to fight for those things, remember? But my girls were fascinated as they saw the, the people they had been studying about in Sunday school begin to come to life. Mary in, in her blue chiffon, Joseph in that brown burlap. The wise men in their, their shiny, bright-colored satin clothes. The shepherds in somebody's bathrobes with a, a stick that looks sort of like a staff. Angel with the wings and the halo. And there in the middle of it all, lying in the manger, was that Cabbage Patch doll. Now, I don't remember what that doll's name was before that night, but from that night onward, that doll's name was Baby Jesus. Now, fast forward a couple of weeks. It was the upstate of South Carolina. We had one of those big snowstorms for us that, that can find you in the house for three or four days. And... One evening, it was sort of rare, the girls were all sort of doing their own thing, and I had a, a rare mommy moment to flip through a, a magazine. Caitlin was in the, in the den where I was, and I noticed that she had all of her cabbage patch, all of her dolls, lined up on the sofa, and she was giving them down, the, I don't know where she got that move, she was giving them down the country, about something. And then she turned to walk away. And as if there was a, a, a comment that I couldn't hear, but she could, she wheeled around. And with all of the authority a three-year-old could muster, she said, and that goes for you too, Jesus. <laughs> well... Yeah, you can imagine my shock <laughs> at hearing our Lord and Savior reprimanded in such a way. But when I began to think about it, I realized that she had hit upon one of the most important tenets of the Christian faith. 
that for all of the fullness of his divinity, Jesus was also fully human. And from the moment he was born, he was part of the family. And that what went for any one of us went for him as well. Scripture tells us that he grew up in a family. Brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles and and cousins all around him. He went to school. He apprenticed as a carpenter and, and learned to make a living at that trade. He had friends. And he cried. He wept when one of them died. And that goes for you too, Jesus. The big word we use for that is incarnation. We see it in in the events of, of the life of the Word made flesh, living among us as one of us. We see it as a thread throughout his life, weaving its way from, from the manger to the cross. And that goes for you too, Jesus. I think he knew it. I think he knew it deep within. He he came to, to, to set a pathway for us to travel. He identifies fully and completely with our human nature. He came to be one of us, as we heard in Matthew's Gospel, so that he might be able to rescue us from the power of sin. The writer of of Hebrews is addressing a, a group of Christians who are being tested by life. In fact, they're being tested to, to the point where they're almost ready to give up on their faith. The powers of darkness were were closing in on them. And the writer tells them, by telling them, the writer tells us, that Jesus was a human being just like us, who shared our experiences, shared our temptations, and yet he remained faithful and without sin. He is our high priest who intercedes for us because he knows our condition. There's one translation that says it this way, and I love it. It says, he had to enter every detail of human life. Every detail of human life. So that means... It means on those days when you're feeling totally and completely helpless. Jesus knows what you're going through. When you're feeling as if you're struggling to be understood by those who know you and love you the most. Jesus knows because he's been there. When you go through days of grief and loss. Jesus knows. When you're in physical pain, Jesus knows. When you wonder sometimes if God is even hearing your prayers, Jesus knows. When you feel lonely, abandoned, betrayed by your friends, Jesus knows. Jesus knows because Jesus has been there and assures us that we're not alone. And that goes for you too, Mary. These words come to me, to each one of us from from deep within the waters of our baptism. We're called, like Jesus, to submit to God's grace And there find our true identity. You see, as Jesus became one with us in the waters of our baptism, 
we've become one with him. Brothers and sisters, he called us to suffer with him for the sake of love. That goes for you too. You see, these words don't come to us just from the waters of our baptism, but also from somewhere deep inside an empty tomb, so that just as Jesus identifies with us in every detail of our human lives, and we identify with him in suffering love, so he calls us in him through death, and even beyond. Jesus has gone the way of glory for us and will take us with him. There is nothing of which I am more sure. And that goes for you too. means that we have little to fear in the face of, of life's challenges. Jesus faced everything that we will ever be called on to face and more and was victorious. When the walls of life began to close in around us and we feel like we can't take one more breath, the best way to free ourselves is to look at the one who has completely destroyed all barriers even the barrier of death itself. One of my favorite people to read is Peter Marshall. Some of you might like to read his works as well. And he says it this way, May our prayer, O Christ, awaken all thy human reminiscences that we may feel in our hearts the sympathizing Jesus. Thou hast walked this earthly veil and hast not forgotten what it is to be tired, what it is to know aching muscles as thou didst work long hours at the carpenter's bench. Thou hast not forgotten what it is to feel sharp stabs of pain or hunger or thirst. Thou knowest what it is to be forgotten, to be lonely. Thou dost remember the feel of hot and scalding tears running down thy cheeks. Oh, we thank thee that thou wert willing to come to earth and share with us the weakness of the flesh. For now we know that thou dost understand all that we are ever called upon to bear. We know that thou, our God, art still able to do more than we ask or expect. So bless us, each one, not according to our deserving, but according to the riches and glory of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And thanks be to God. As we enter this time of, of offering now, whether you have, have already placed your offering in the box on your way in, if you are prepared to do that on your way out, if, if you're worshiping with us um, from somewhere else, and if you're prepared to go online now and, and to make your, your offering of your resources that way, let's also consider in these moments how Christ might be speaking to us and coming to us even in these days.
we prepare to join our hearts together in prayer this morning, we, um, we remember uh, Paul Riley and his family on the death of his mother this week, Fran Horn. Uh, and services will be held at a later date. If you have an unspoken request this morning, would you lift your hand? Let us come before the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, as, as we approach this holy day in which you chose to come to us. Open our hearts, open our ears, open our eyes that we might see you in the people and in the world around us. Help us to be aware that even as you came in the flesh so long ago, so now you still walk among us live among us as we and others bear you in every day of our lives. Gracious God, we lift before you in prayer this day those who, who have lost ones they love, and even in these moments who walk through the valley of the shadow, 
Fill each one with your peace and wrap your arms of love around them. Whether the loss was recent or has been some time, in these days, there's still, there's still pain. We thank you that you know that pain, that we know, and that you are with us every step of the way. Gracious God, like eager children, we await Christmas Day once again. Be with us so that we might be for the world that you so love, bringers of hope and peace and joy and love. Hear our prayers this day, not just the prayers of my lips, but the prayers of each heart gathered here this day. For we make them in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to say together when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. It does not into as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. would please stand and now with one heart one voice one faith let us proclaim that which we believe using the historic words of the Apostles Creed I believe in God Father Almighty joining together in singing O Little Town of Bethlehem.
Jesus is here. And the person that's near you, the person who's far away, the stranger, the friend of life, alike. As you go forth from this place this day, look for him. I promise you'll find him. And as you go, remember that you do not go alone, but that God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit goes with you and remains with you now and forever. Amen. Thank you.